please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup. This is you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores! And we're live. Hey everybody. So we are back again for another off-season recap video. And today we're going to be talking about the Philadelphia Flyers who have had one of the quietest off-seasons of any team in the NHL this off-season and really haven't made a whole lot of changes. So before we get into it, I just ask you to please hit that subscribe button if you're new and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Both of those things help out a lot and are very, very much appreciated. But let's get into it here, looking at the Philadelphia Flyers and the moves that they have made. Um, the only real notable addition to the team is Eric Gustafson, who... Uh, was a Chicago Blackhawk, finished last year as a Calgary Flame, and uh, signed as a free agent with the Philadelphia Flyers uh, back in October. Subtractions. There's been a few. Uh, Matt Niskanen was the biggest by far and the most surprising with his surprise retirement that kind of caught everyone off guard. Uh, he was their second best defenseman. He played on the top pair with Ivan Provorov. And Matt Niskanen looked like he still had a few, at least a few good years of hockey left in him. And uh, he just, at the end of the season, decided that he didn't want to play anymore and that he, he you know, wasn't, wasn't going to play in, in the NHL anymore. And all, all respect to Matt Niskanen. He had a great career. Um, and certainly if, if that's not where his heart is at this point, then it makes all the sense in the world for him to retire. It was just very surprising and something that I don't think many of us saw coming. They also lost uh, depth forwards Nate Thompson, Tyler Pitlick, and Derek Grant, all in free agency. Nate Thompson signed with the Winnipeg Jets. Tyler Pitlick, who had a very underratedly good season last year for Philadelphia, went to the Arizona Coyotes, and Derek Grant went back to the Anaheim Ducks. So... Uh, they lose some depth forwards, and they lose their second-best defenseman, and all they bring in is Eric Gustafson, who certainly is not going to be a direct replacement for Nat Matt Niskanen. He's not nearly that good, but he will help soften the blow of losing Matt Niskanen on that defense core. We'll talk more about him later. Um, but you know they're going to be relying on a lot of young players to step up and take that next step. They re-signed um, Nicholas Abe Kubel. They re-signed Brian Elliott as their backup goalie. They re-signed uh, Justin Braun and Robert Haig on the defense. So they're going to be relying on a lot of guys who are already there to kind of step up and play bigger roles. And they have some young players coming up as well, like Joel Farabee, Morgan Frost, and potentially getting Nolan Patrick back, which would be huge. Um, could really help fill out that forward group if those young guys can play bigger minutes. So, um, you know, it's been a, it's been a fairly quiet off season for the Flyers. They haven't done a whole lot, and um, you know, it, it's still it's going to be interesting to watch this team looking into next year. But now I want to bring in a friend of mine and fellow hockey YouTuber Nordic97, who is a Flyers fan, to talk about his team and talk about the Philadelphia Flyers. So Nordic, take it away. What is going on, guys? Nord97 here, back again with another video today. I'm on a different channel. Feels weird. First off, I'd like to thank John from Off the Wall Hockey for letting me come onto the channel. You know, when I always get, I always get a collab offers a lot, and I always take, I always say yes to him because I just love collabing with other people. And you know, John's someone that I've watched a lot before I started YouTube. So you know, he's kind of, he's kind of one of the guys that I've liked. You know, he's a pretty good friend of mine. So you know. If you haven't already subscribed to him, I recommend doing that. Anyways, he asked me to go talk about my favorite team, the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, let's just say they went on a bit salty. They lost in round number two in game seven to the New York Islanders after being down 3-1 to one in the series and winning two games in overtime to force a game seven, but then got shut out for nothing as they did infamously in game number one. Yeah, don't ask. All right, so what is the Flyers' future? Now, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think that this team has the potential, has the players to make a run. I think they have the players to make a run for a cup. And, you know, I've been hearing a lot of rumors, and I'm sure you guys have too, about Nolan Patrick returning to the Flyers. Now, Nolan Patrick was out for the 2020-21 season with a migraine disorder. 
uh, where it's basically where you get headaches and stuff, and, like, it just makes your head feel bad, and, like, you can't really play well without that. So, yeah, he hasn't played a single game since um, March of 2019. So, it's, it's been a while. Well, not March, April of 2019. So, it, it's, been, it's been quite a bit. So, you know, he's been skating. Uh, I think he's going to be ready for whenever this NHL season starts. We're not exactly sure when. But I think that Nolan Patrick is a good, solid third third line center. Everyone's considering him bus, a, a bust. You can't really consider him a bust because of a migraine disorder. Like, what? I mean, I by me, I think he should get a three year, uh, three years to prove himself. And I think a lot of people run by that too. Um, but people say since he got the migraine disorder in his third season that he's a bust. Um, I, I doubt it. There were players that they probably could have picked that were better than Nolan Patrick. But, um, no, I think Nolan Patrick is a very solid third-line center, especially when they lost Nate Thompson, who was their third-line center in the playoffs to the, to the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I think that Nate, I think that, sorry, I think that Nolan Patrick will be a good replacement for him. Now, here's the huge thing on the defense. Um, we lost Matt Niskanen. We lost Matt Niskanen to retirement. Um, and I, I can't blame him for that. I mean, I was a bit, I was a bit mad at first. I'm like, dang it, we just lost our second-best defenseman, in my opinion, at least. Uh, you could you could argue Philip Myers or Tyler Myers or whatever the heck you want. Um, you know we lost Niskan into retirement. I was a bit salty about it at first, but you know it's retirement. Come on, dude. And he won a Stanley Cup with the Capitals, which I got to respect with because I saw it happen. And you know I just got to give major respect to him because he had a great career. And I mean, ignore the Brandon Gallagher issue. Now there's a few things when it comes to that. Um, Ivan Provorov, he had a great season with with Niskanen on that top D pairing. Um, he needs to make sure that he does not um, go down in like points without Niskanen. He needs to ha not have a setback, not not at all. Because if he does, that could affect him for the rest of his career. Now he may be playing with David Gustafson, who um, you know I've heard a lot of things where it's like, oh, he's gonna re he's gonna replace Gustafsson. We'll get back to we'll get to him in a second here. Um, he could replace, he could just replace Niskanen on that line, which I think is why he, he was signed by Philly. Uh, I think that was exactly why. And, you know, they re-signed Justin Braun as well, who's probably going to be that second pairing defenseman. I think Gustafsson will take that first line pairing. Um, and I don't see Justin Braun with Ivan Provorov. Um, that's not going to work out well. So, you know, I think Provorov needs to avoid a setback. Gustafsson, not as good as Niskanen, but he will definitely help out the team. 40 points wasn't horrible. I mean, he was traded to Chicago. To Calgary midway through. Uh, we all know how that went. You know, he's signed by Philadelphia. I think that this is a good signing. I think that it'll help out Philadelphia um, on the defensive side of things. Let's get back to Shane Gossespierre. So Shane Gossespierre, um, there's been a ton of rumors over since, I want to say, probably free agency of 2019. I was hearing rumors that he would go to Montreal on that day of 2019 um, free agency day. And it didn't happen. It hasn't happened yet. There were rumors flowing all through this season, especially with a bad, the horrible season that Gosses Bear had with the Flyers. Um, we could see him on his way out. Um, I think he will probably get traded. I know it, it hurts me to say, but I know I think he'll probably get traded. Um, I heard rumors of him, and honestly, we'll go back, we'll go to Patrick Lina here for one second. The Patrick Lina trade, if there's gonna be one in Philadelphia, um, Shane Gosses Bear is gonna be a part of it. Um, there's no way he's not. So, if you think that you're going to get some good, decent defender out of it, um, um, Winnipeg, I think you are going to get a solid second pairing guy. Gosses Bear, he really needs to have a bounce back season in Philadelphia, or else he's on his way out, and he may even, may even be on his way out already. So, I think Patrick Laine heading off to Philadelphia is definitely possible as well. But Gosses Bear will definitely be in play with that. So yeah, uh, projected cap space, we have four million dollars in cap space, almost five million, but um, you know. We have a first-round pick for 2021, a second-round pick for 2021 as well, a third for 2021, a fourth, not a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. So, you know, we have a total of six draft picks there. Um, I'm sure we'll acquire more. Um, in all honesty, if they really want to make a run with Claude Drew and some of the players that are on this team right now, they're going to have to do it either this season or next season. And I said that last season. I said that they need to do it either this season or next season if they want to do it with Claude Drew. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna really need to do it because I really want to get Claude Drew a cup. And, you know, in a rising young goaltender Metropolitan Division, with, you know, with Carter Hart and stuff, it's going to be tough. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to compete in this division. Because I think the teams that have really, that have really been dominating this division since, like, the 2010s, 
um, like the early 2010s, like the Capitals, um, the Penguins. I think they're going to start taking a dive. They may start taking a dive pretty soon. Um, you, you could you could argue with me differently, but I think that this that's going to happen. I think this is the last good year for a lot of these teams, and I think they're just going to take a dive. So, you know, the, it's up to the Flyers, I'd say the Rangers, and maybe the um, the Devils if they can have a bounce back. I, I would put Columbus and Carolina in there too. So it's going to be a very competitive um. Very competitive um, Metropolitan Division this season. And, you know, I think the Flyers can do it. Now, relying on goaltending, goaltending-wise, it's going to be pretty easy. Um, Brian Elliott, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Brian Elliott, he should be traded. Um, I don't think he should. Um, I think that, you know, when Carter Hart got injured in January for those two, three weeks, Brian Elliott came in, and I think he won. Um, I think he won eight out of ten games that he played. Which is which is great. It's awesome. So I think that Leonard I, Leonard. I think that Brian Elliott is a very solid backup. He's he's very old. I get that. But we do have some guys in the prospect pool. We have Ustamenko, who I've seen play, and we have um Samuelson or Sanderson, whichever one of those. And you know he's dangerous as well. And you know you always have Alex Lyon down there. He's never he's never really been successful, but I think that he you know he keeps playing the in the AHL. He may get better. So. Let me know your thoughts. Um, thank you again for John for letting me come on the channel. And um, I guess if you want to subscribe to me, you can. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm currently on break right now because, um, you know, long story. Just go check out my channel. So, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Salute to John off the wall hockey. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much to Nordic97 for coming on the channel. His link to his channel will be in the description of this video. As always, please go uh, give him, give him a, a look, guys, and check out his channel. I always like to bring in some younger YouTubers and um, Nord Nordic's a guy that's been watching my channel for a while and someone that I've known for a while. So it's been nice to have, it's nice to have him on the channel. And um, yeah, you know, he, he talked a lot about the Flyers in their off season from his perspective and uh, some of the things that he brought up, obviously losing Matt Niskanen was probably the biggest happening of the off season for the Philadelphia Flyers. He talked a lot about that effect that could have on Ivan Provorov because um, they were D partners. I don't think you're going to see a drop-off in Provorov's play. Pro Ivan Provorov is a legitimate number one defenseman in the NHL. He is a legit top pair guy who is going to be the number one guy for the Flyers. Um, but it does affect the rest of your decor, losing a, vet a steady two-way veteran guy like Matt Niskanen absolutely is going to affect your team defense as a whole and your decor as a whole. And I don't know what their D pairs are going to look like next year. Um, I really don't think Eric Gustafson is a guy who's going to come in and just replace Matt Niskanen. He, Eric Gustafson is much more of a of a four, five, six type defenseman with some good offensive upside than a number one or he's not a number two, one or one or two guy. He's not a top pair defenseman. So I don't think Eric Gustafson adding Gustafson certainly does help soften the blow of losing Niskanen, but it doesn't completely, you know, replace him. So that is going to be something to watch. This defense without Matt Niskanen is going to be something to watch. And again, they're going to be relying on Phil Myers and Travis Sanheim, two young D-men, a lot this coming season. Those two are going to need to take big step up in their game, big steps up in their game this coming season. As far as goaltending goes, I mean, they're very solid in that. And it's not been very often. I mean, really, this is the first time in my lifetime that you can say that about the Philadelphia Flyers, but they are very, very solid in net with um, Carter Hart, obviously, is, is your starter, another year older, another year more experience, some playoff experience under his belt now, looks like one of the absolute best young goaltenders in the game of hockey, and I think will be a Vesna Trophy level goaltender in the near future for Philadelphia. So, And then you've got a veteran guy like Brian Elliott, who has been extremely solid as Carter Hart's backup, particularly last season. They were a phenomenal tandem last season. Uh, I think they're going to be fine in goal. Uh, I'm not really worried about that. And up front, I mean, they lost some depth players, but you've got, um, obviously, Oscar Lindblom should be back full-time next season. He was able to play at the end of the playoffs. Um, very, very good to see him back in the lineup. 
and and you've got the potential for Nolan Patrick coming back. And this is big. Nolan Patrick, very, very unfortunate situation. He was a second overall draft pick, and he's had major migraine issues and major head issues in general. And and that made him miss in the entire of entirety of last season. If Nolan Patrick can come back and be a third line center with you know, Couturier is your top line guy, Hayes is your second line guy, and Patrick as your third line guy. That sets them up fine down the middle. Obviously, they lost Nate Thompson, they lost Derek Grant, and they lost Tyler Pitlick. Those are all bottom six guys who really helped filled out the forward group for this team. Um, they need some of the younger guys to really step up and fill those roles. Joel Farabee needs to be an everyday player. Morgan Frost needs to make that jump to the NHL. Um, uh, Nicholas Abe Kubel has been a solid fourth liner for them last year. He needs to take that next step into being, you know, an even better fourth line guy for them, maybe even a third line guy for them. And then you've got guys like Connor Bunneman and um, Connor Torinsky who kind of got tastes of NHL action last year. Those young guys are going to need to step up to replace the depth that they lost with Pitlick and, and Thompson and, and De- uh, Grant leaving. So um, I just think they're going to rely on on, you know, their younger guys taking that next next step and moving forward in the lineup and just playing more minutes and playing a bigger role in the lineup. And on the back end, obviously, um, they're, they're hoping for the same thing with guys like Travis Sanheim and Phil Myers and Robert Haig. They're just looking for them to take that next step forward to getting better. And, um, you know, I, I think for, the, for Philadelphia, they were one of the best teams in the East last year. Um, I see no reason why they can't be one of the best teams in the East again this year. They're bringing back a very, very similar team. A little bit of the depth is, uh, veteran depth is gone, but they're replacing with younger depth that, you know, it may be a little bit more risky as far as, you know, does it go well or does it not? But with, with Giroux, Couturier, Voracek, Konechny, um, Provorov, Myers, Sanheim on the back end, um, Carter Hart and goal. There's no reason this team can't be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference again this season, especially if Lindblom comes back and is right back to being a 20 goal guy. And if Nolan Patrick can come back and be a good third line center, uh, th- this team is going to be set up to be one of the top teams in the East. So Philly had a very good year last year. I'm expecting big things from them again this season. And, um, that's what I've got on the Philadelphia Flyers. So With that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon merchandise store and donation link are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.